Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Senator Anthony Portentino, um, and I want to welcome you to our uh, pre-Veterans Day event called uh, Shared Experience, uh, Common Valor. Um, it's my honor to be part of this program. Um, I think it's going to be very poignant and very appropriate. As you know, uh, in two days, uh, United States Veterans Day on November 11th, we celebrate and appreciate all the veterans who have served in all of our, our conflicts around the globe and, and domestically. And so we wanted to uh, do a program uh, for veterans uh, ahead of Veterans Day. And so thank you for being here. We have a very, very distinguished panel of veterans, both uh, United States veterans and uh, veterans of both Artsakh War with us again under the theme of shared experiences and common valor. Um, given the proud service of so many Americans, and so many Californians in our military. Um, I thought a conversation between US veterans and Armenian vet uh, Artsakh veterans would be appropriate. I grew up the son of a World War II veteran. I did not have the honor of serving our country in the military, but I'm honored to be a state senator and doing public service uh, the best I can. I have deep respect for the men and women who serve our country uh, and serve in the military. So we could have the freedoms at home, those folks who risk our lives. Um, I'd like to introduce, uh, we have two committees that help put this event on. We have the Senate Committee on Military and Veterans Affairs, and I'm gonna run down the list of those members, but I also wanna give a, a big appreciation to the Senate Committee on Military and Veterans Affairs staff and my staff as well uh, for working in concert, putting on this event and the Senate Caucus staff for the support. Um, this could not be brought to you without a tremendous group of uh, professional and hardworking Senate staffers who worked to, to bring us uh, to this day. Um, as I said, we have two committees that are co-hosting this event, the Veterans Committee and also the Select Committee on California Armenian Artsakh Mutual Trade Art and Cultural Exchange. With us, we have the chair of the uh, Veterans Committee, uh, Senator Bob Archuleta. That committee also has Shannon Grove, who's a veteran, Susan Talamantes Eggman, who's a veteran, Melissa Melendez, who's a veteran, Josh Newman, who's a veteran, uh, Richard Ross, who's a veteran and a general, uh, Thomas Umberg, uh, who is also a retired colonel. Uh, that makes up that committee, and so we appreciate their support. And then the Armenian California Select Committee, which I chair. It, again, Senator Archuleta is a member of that committee. Uh, Senator Andres Borges is a, is a member, Maria Elena Durazo, Melissa Hurtado, Brian Jones, Susan Rubio, Henry Stern, Scott Weiner and Scott Wilk all are on the committee that I chair. And so both committees are bringing this event to us today. Um, my co-presenter, Chair Archuleta, represents the 32nd District. Um, he is the first Latino Army veteran named to chair the, the committee. Um, Senator Archuleta served as a presidential appointee under the 44th President of the United States, Barack Obama, as a member of the Board of Vis Visitors to the United States Military Academy at West Point. And he was the first Mexican American to be appointed by any president to the board and was immediately elected co chair. He is a distinguished veteran and one of my uh, Senate colleagues who I'm deeply respectful of. Senator Archuleta, would you provide a few opening remarks for us uh, as a proud U.S. veteran? Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you can all hear me. Good morning. Yes, good, good, good. Well, good morning, Senator. Thank you for putting this together and all of the uh, people that are on the air. And ladies and gentlemen, you heard the list of all the senators who are behind this with you. Uh, we acknowledge your service. God bless you all for your doing what you're doing. Well, good morning and thank you all for joining us as we approach Veterans Day here in America. But when we're talking about veterans, we're talking about anyone who serves their nation uh, with honor and distinction. And yes, I'm the chair of the Military and Veterans Committee, but I wanna acknowledge my colleagues uh, and of course, Senator Anthony Porrentino for inviting me to, to be here with you today and to uh, acknowledge the fact that so many veterans have served this great nation, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, Coast Guard, and all of us have worked together. And if there's a common denominator, it is commitment, commitment to God and country. Our nation owes a debt of gratitude to all of those who served. And I'm so proud that today we acknowledge you across uh, from shore to shore. And so without your commitment to your nation, uh, imagine what where you'd be. But our nation's armed forces 
uh, are solid, solid behind veterans, solid behind those who served, men and women who wore the uniform. And uh, brothers in arms, sisters in arms, I want to tell you, the Senate Committee on Military and Veterans Affairs, we're proud to represent you in any way we can. My colleagues are there for you each and every day. Uh, from the business to start, uh, let's acknowledge the fact that veterans give so much. And if you want, uh, let's talk for just for a quick second, what they contribute to their nation. Uh, employment, the best. Uh, commitment, the best. Everyone acknowledges veterans serve their companies, their corporations, uh, without a doubt, with honor and dignity, because they've done that uh, for their nation. So the veterans that are on screen, the veterans who are listening, thank you for your service and God bless you. Once again, I'm Senator Bob Archuleta and I'm so honored to be here with you today. And when you ask about that common denominator, once again, it's commitment. It is your military background that gives you this sense of duty, pride and honor. And that's what makes a veteran so strong. So Senator, thank you again for allowing me to speak to you and everyone this morning. And uh, for our veterans out there, God bless you for your service and thank you. Thank you, thank Senator, Senator Archuleta for you, for your service to our country and service to the state Senator, Senate. I appreciate your, your service and being here with us today. Uh, I appreciate it, thank you. Um, I also wanna give a shout out to uh, the High Commissioner of Diaspora and Affairs, Zade Sananian. Uh, we worked very closely with his office too to bring uh, the support service uh, representatives to this meeting. And so I know he is watching us uh, uh, from his office as well. And so thank you, High Commissioner Sananian, for, for your service and your help in putting this important uh, uh, cross-continent veterans appreciation event together. So uh, your, your support is deeply appreciated as well. Uh, next, we're going to go to Kevark Duzanjian. Um, Kevark joined the United States Army in 1999 as a combat engineer in Fort Leonard, uh, Missouri. Uh, after boot camp, he was stationed Hello, in Bomberg. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yep. Hold on one second. Uh, you were stationed in Bomberg, Germany with the Big Red and One Division and quickly de deployed to Kosovo and Bosnia after participating in many vigorous trainings with NATO, German, Germany Army, Belgium Commando School, and finally Sapper Leadership School. And had a major injury during his service and was honorably discharged in 2002. So, um, Kevork, if you could say a couple brief comments, that would be fantastic, fantastic to share your experience and focus on this theme of uh, common valor and shared experience. Uh, yes, uh, good morning. Uh, I'm, I, I was having um, difficulty uh, with the audio. I just switched from my car to the iPhone. So uh, you want me to can, uh, give a quick uh, presentation? We can hear you. We can hear you fine, sir. So tell us what you think about the shared experience and common valor of serving in our military. Oh yes. So uh, like uh, the senator earlier said, uh, thank you, senator, uh, for your service as well. Uh, we we all have a seven uh, uh, common de denominator, uh, especially with discipline and. Overall, I think uh, resilience, being resilient uh, to uh, any, uh, uh, you know, good or bad uh, environment surrounding us, we're able to uh, block uh, anything and uh, follow our uh, objective and make sure we go, we complete our objective, even if we have to go through a, a wall or a mountain. So, so nothing can get in our way, basically, uh, as long as we have uh, a good men and women on the side of us protecting us as well. So you think that the training you got, the military training, prepared you for every other endeavor in your life? Yeah, sorry, I, I, I couldn't hear, sorry. I said your military, your military training prepared you. Oh, yes, yes, uh, definitely did. Uh, I think it's a great discipline. I think it'll be good if it's a mandatory one year, at least for every uh, American teenager, especially the teenagers these years, these days. Well, that's funny. I, my daughters are a decade apart and there's definitely changing over that decade you can see in our young people. So Kevork, thank you for your service to our country. I may have a follow-up question before you go, but I really appreciate you taking the time to be here. Um, and God bless and thank you for your service. 
Yes, thank you. And thanks, thanks for the invitation, uh, uh, Sander. Thank you very much. Have a same to you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're we're going to go to Anthony Rodriguez from CalVet, uh, is the local interagency network uh, coordinator of CalVet. And uh, Anthony, uh, you're going to give us a, an overview of CalVet and tell us a little bit about some of the services that are available through CalVet. Yes, well, thank you for being here. Happy Veterans Day. And um, CalVet is the California Department of Veteran Affairs. We're the state version of the VA. And what's so important is that California has an abundance of benefits that we provide to military veterans. Um, California has the largest network of services and uh, we provide uh, services uh, while we work with our County Veteran Service Office. George Dixon will be on shortly. And we work hand in hand with them to uh, service veterans in the area of service-connected disability compensation claims. So this could change the life of a veteran. If you served in the U.S. military and you have any disabilities, you are eligible for a potentially monthly compensation as well as care. Our most, popular our most popular benefits are that we pay for college for your children. If you served in um, the country, if you served in our uh, U.S. forces and are a resident of California, um, we also have home loan programs. We have programs for women, programs and benefits uh, for businesses. Um, there's just, we have just more services than anybody else. And we have a very good program that helps with the transition for military members uh, as they come out. We work with military bases, reservists, National Guard, and so on. So we're very fortunate. LA County has the greatest number of veterans in the nation. And uh, along with some of the other services, I see Jimmy Guevara here with VPAN and others, uh, just, just just a whole variety of benefits. I'm just one of them that are here. Happy to serve. I'm a former US Marine captain myself and um, pleased to be with you this morning. Anthony, and on our theme of sort of shared experience, common valor, do you have any thoughts you wanna share on that? Yes, I, I think that um, the thing that we all have as, as um, military members or former military members is we're willing to give our lives for something greater than ourselves a belief, an idea, a thought um, that uh, we hold uh, very dearly. And I think um, uh, it really sets us apart and uh, it, it uh, un helps us to understand things like honor and value, uh, valor. And I think that um, we're better citizens for it. And I think we understand the sacrifices that it takes. We appreciate those that also participate in that. Thank you. Thank you for your service to our country. And thank you for continuing to give back to the veterans community across the state of California. Uh, really, really appreciate it. Thank Happy you. to be here. Thank uh, you. We've also, uh, again, in our cross-continent uh, appreciation of veterans, we also have uh, the Minister of Labor and Social Services from Armenia, uh, Narek Mikurchian, who's with us as well. And so, uh, Minister Mikurchian, uh, welcome. Uh, Bari Luis, if you could uh, say a brief uh, introduction of yourself, I would love to uh, thank you for, for helping us arrange some of the Armenian services that we have with us today. Hi everyone, uh, Mr. Senator Portana, thank you. Thank you very much for, for this event. I would like to thank all of uh, you for this very important event and for the invitation. And I want to thank uh, Mr. Zara Sinanyan uh, for inviting me uh, to this wonderful uh, event. Thank you. Yeah, I am the Minister of uh, Labor and Social Affairs of Armenia, and you know that uh, last year Armenia experienced devastating war, and the Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs was the main state agency, agency responsible for dealing with all the challenges and the issues which concerned with the post-war uh, crisis situation. And uh, it's it's honor to have veterans uh, in this event. You know that the veteran service is important for every country, every society. And mm -hmm. now it's our turn uh, to service them, to respect uh, their experience. And we have to do our best to emphasize their distinguished role in our society. Mm -hmm. So after after war, the ministry uh, did a lot of things. Uh, to solve a lot of problems of the veterans, especially uh, who got, um, let's say, disability because of the war. And now we are doing our best to provide uh, the best uh, assistive um, technology for them in order to return them uh, to normal life. And uh, we are doing 
other projects as well to provide them with employment to make them a part of the society so it's 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 uh, our honor and we would be happy as a ministry to learn more about the experience of veterans of us uh, and of course to create some bridge between our veterans and the u.s veterans to learn uh, uh, more experience uh, from them and uh, I, as a minister, would be happy to learn uh, how we can uh, develop uh, institutionally the veteran affairs in Armenia. I know that the U.S. has sophisticated institution of the veteran affairs, and now we are uh, working on developing this institution to provide independent uh, life opportunities, to provide them with uh, any kind of means which will um, provide them with a unique opportunity to return to society and to be uh, to to play like the same uh, role as others and of course to be the role model for other members of the society again thank you for this uh, event thank you for invitation thank you uh, minister for being here and uh, anthony from calvet if you could put your email in the chat and maybe you and the the minister can exchange emails through the chat you can make contact with each other uh, after this event because one of the themes we want to do is you know bring this shared experience but also the shared services that we're offering in each country so we can help each other so if you guys could exchange your your emails through the chat that would be very helpful and if for some reason you can't my staff will facilitate that after this uh, call as well so thank, thank you, you all for being here happy to do so um we're going to go to uh Hago Kujakian uh, next, who's a Vietnam War veteran, and uh, he was drafted into the U.S. Army in February 1964, and a year later was sent to Korea and was signed to a, a unit five miles from the DMZ. Uh, he shares that uh, Mr. Senator, excuse me, Colonel Umberg was also at the DMZ. Um, and so, uh, Hago, uh, after 12 months, you were honorably discharged serving our great country, so thank you for being here, and please share a few words and uh, touch upon our common valor shared experiences theme. And thank you for your service. Thank you, Senator. When I received, as a young man, I received a letter from the president I was being drafted. I went through a lot of shock, but I was honest to God, I was proud to be drafted in the U.S. Army. And uh, after serving at Fort Ord for a whole year, when I got my uh, orders to ship to Vietnam, I mean, Korea, all the way on the ocean, we were afraid that we would be rerouted to Vietnam because it was, things were heating up. Uh, all 3,000 of us were lucky enough to go to Korea, but didn't realize that we would be stationed so close to North Korea. We were like five miles from North Korea. That was a shocking. But anyway, when you say common valor, most of, the, most of my GI friends uh, in, in my unit were honest to God. We were just proud to be uh, Americans proud to serve in the U.S. Army, and we would when we would go on uh, the different ventures, we would proud we would be proud to be as Americans and express the bravery and the dedication we have. So the shared experience now, I, I feel a great bond every time I meet a, a service person. So I'm, I was proud to serve my country. I'm still very proud, and I went through a whole six years of college on the GI Bill. So now I'm, I'm, I'm thank you for this. And I'm, I'm very proud to have been a, a veteran in the U.S. Army. I'm proud to be an American. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Really appreciate your participation and your service to our country. Uh, thank you for sharing with us. Um, thank you. We're going to go to uh, Colonel Umberg, uh, Senator Umberg, who represents the 34th District. And he's a retired, as I said, Army Colonel. Uh, he began his military service also at the DMZ in Korea and served three overseas tours. Uh, he served after active military duty in 2009, uh, leading the U.S. military effort to uh, attack corruption within the Afghan army and police, for which he was awarded a Bronze Star for meritorious service in combat. And uh, Senator Umberg, I'm honored to share uh, a position in the state Senate with you and always impressed by your uh, decades of service to our country and your military background. So thank you for being here with us this morning. And if you would uh, say a few opening remarks, and then I have a couple questions for you. Sure. Well, um, Senator Portantino, as, as I arrived here today, I, I was struck by the um, 
sort of the irony of your two passions coming together at, at one focus point. Um, as many of you know, Senator Portentino is extremely passionate about Armenian Americans and Armenia. I, I remember the uh, internal turmoil that he was going through during the Artsakh war, number one. So you've been a champion for the Armenian American community since I've, I've known you. Um, and for veterans, I know how proud you are of your father's military service and how supportive you are of veterans. And so the confluence of those two passions on this call is, is really wonderful, number one. Number two, in terms of, of what we all share as veterans, irrespective of who you serve with and, and fought for, uh, one, as was mentioned earlier, is your um, belief that you're involved in something bigger than yourself. That's how you start. You feel like, you know, I'm, I'm doing something that's important for others. That's number one. And then number two is the camaraderie. Um, all of you who have served in the military, particularly in, in challenging circumstances, know how important your colleagues are, your comrades are. They provide you physical and emotional support. Um, as, as Senator Portentino mentioned, I served on the demilitarized zone many years ago. I was, I think, 38 years ago. I am still in touch with the people I served with 38 years ago on a fairly regular basis um, because we shared that time together. That's a bond that, that can't be replicated. The same thing, although different, I was uh, uh, quite a bit older when I served in Afghanistan, still share that bond um, with those that I served with in Afghanistan and, and that can't be replicated. And so um, when you leave, the other thing, I suppose there's a third issue and the third issue is that you have an obligation Having served, you have an obligation then to serve those who are now serving and those who have recently left the military to make sure that, that they're adequately cared for, whether it's their physical needs or whether it's their educational needs or their financial needs. They've given something to us. Now we have an obligation to make sure that they're back on their own two feet um, as best they can in all those ways I mentioned. So. Let me conclude again by thanking you, Senator Portentino, for bringing this group together. Thank you, uh, Senator Colonel Lumberg. I, I do have one question for you. You were an officer in Afghanistan and you saw many young people in their first deployment um, come through uh, come through Afghanistan. What 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 do you think? What observation do you do? You, could you share with us about those young? soldiers in their first deployment in a, in in a in a foreign land during Afghanistan is there something something that that struck you about the men and women who served well it, you're right when i served in afghanistan i was 55 years old and and i had a whole different attitude towards the people that were serving with me and is it um i was of a different rank uh and i was much more paternalistic it was very very hard to see 19 year olds put themselves um, in a place of, of great danger um, without feeling tremendous trepidation, tremendous concern, tremendous fear, maybe because I looked at each of them as my sons and daughters and, and knew that they had parents back at home who were um, praying for them to come back well um, in one piece. And, and that was hard, that was very hard. Second point is, is that 19 year olds sometimes can be knuckleheads. All of you who have served know that 19 year olds can be knuckleheads. And I, I used, to, used to drive me wacky sometimes the judgment that might be used or lack thereof. Um, I, I, I had a constant battle with some of my folks to make sure they were wearing their body armor at all times. And, uh, and, and uh, I felt like I was their father kicking them in the uh, hind parts. Uh, and one last question. I know you're on a tight time schedule. Uh, what, when you were stateside and you saw those young veterans come home, what struck you about them when they returned home uh, versus when they showed up in Afghanistan? Do you have any observation or thoughts on on how may, they might have changed or or what, what, what was it like for a young veteran to come back from a deployment? Uh, it could be your own experience or, or what did you witness? Oh, there's... Um... Wow. Uh, well, first of all, experience overseas, experience in the military is, is transformational. Um, you may go in as a, a young woman or a young man, um, and I mentioned some of them are knuckleheads, but, but when they come back, 
they have a sense of pride, they have a sense of mission, they have a sense of, as I said, um, obligation to their comrades uh, who who are with them wherever they were. Uh, and I, um, I suppose that paternalistic feeling continues as to the young people that are coming back. Um, but I, I, um, I, am, I am struck, I guess, with the responsibility, the, the responsibility they have and we have to make sure that we do what we can to make sure that, that, that their service is honored, recognized, and that their, um, their needs, economic needs, their educational needs, their physical needs are met with, um, with adequate resources. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna go a little out of order. I'm gonna go to uh, Edward and Fajian, who was a, was a, re, was a retired captain, uh, was in the front line of, for the liberation of Artsakh 1990 to 1994, who's an uh, engineer and has a doctorate in Middle East stud studies. Uh, captain, uh, what are your observations of those young soldiers uh, and talk about your experience as well. What what do you want to share as far as your shared experience? And and you know, I'm calling on the mature our mature veterans to sort of talk about the young veterans for a moment. Uh, thank you, Senator, for inviting me uh, on the for this event. And we we really all all type of veterans that fought in wars they have. Uh, common similarities that we sh can share every every day, every moment. Of course, as Senator Umberg told us before, we have total different relations than the average people in the society. The people who fought the war, who were protecting values, uh, we were protecting the values, like the American veterans were protecting their homeland security, the smiles on their kids' face. We were protecting the human rights. We were protecting human rights on our, in our motherland. We were protecting human human rights in different countries in the world. And of course, the main thing that we were fighting is really the values. The values to live free. We were fighting for freedom. We were fighting for liberations from colonialism, from kind of Islamic fundamentalism, and. Um, intolerance, intolerance. This is what we were protecting, and of course we share say, share same values. Uh, in Armenia, it, the, the situation was totally different in 1995, 1996, up to uh, those days. And of course, Armenia is trans transforming into a better country. Armenia is now taking more care for veterans than during our time, during our war, our war, we had people that just uh, became disabled and the government was not able to take care of them. Now I see a lot of improvements in those, in those issues. And of course, of course, we passed through really hard times. Every, everybody who was in the middle of, in the center of the war, of course, we have been traumatized, traumatized, <clears throat> and of course, we need some kind of assistance. Not all of us, but a lot of people who fought in wars, they need some kinds of mostly psychological assistance and like kind of welcoming society behind his back. This is the most, I think, most important for all type of veterans that they have, ex they have a welcoming back behind them. Well, once they return from war, the society should be able to accept them as they are because they were protecting, they were giving something to protect their homeland from different type of dangers, security. These were what we were generating for our societies. This Thank you. Say. So what do you think about the 19-year-olds, the 18-year-olds uh, in their first deployment? I know when I went to the to the front in Agdam uh, three years ago, you know, the dad in me, when I would look at the soldiers, I'd say they look so young. Uh, what what observations? I mean, obviously they're mature beyond their their look. Is there any any observation about those young soldiers? I remember when I in in 2016 when the four day war began, I called to Artsakh 
and my friends were preparing their soldiers troops to go to the front line and we did a video call a video call and i said guys take care like be brave don't be afraid there's nothing I, like kind of i was encouraging from los angeles my friends and there were soldiers behind those guys like 90 years old guys and you know what they say they said daddy don't worry we're gonna take care of them this is what i heard from 19 years old guys they're heroes they're heroes each of them is a hero each of them he knows what he's doing he knows why he's over there and as has been mentioned before they're knuckleheads most of them are knuckleheads this i can say for them they're heroes Thank you. i'm proud that we have such a new beautiful generation i'm proud they're heroes they were They're fighting against right? four or five countries last this war. They were fighting against coalition of four or five countries. And they were standing on their grounds. I'm proud of them. I, I, uh, you're bringing tears to my eyes. When I, when I met with the soldiers, uh, one of them handed me a handful of dirt. And he had literally handed it to me. And he said, this is our land. We're going to stand on our land. We're going to fight on our land. And we're going to die on our land. And I brought that dirt back to California with me. I put it in my pocket and I have it in my office because I'll, I'll never forget. And, and uh, High Commissioner Sinanian was with me. Uh, he translated and he, he was crying. It was such a, a magical moment to, to hear the soldiers just at such a young age have that commitment to, to duty on our country. So thank you for your service as well. Um, we are going to pay tribute to an American uh, veteran who recently passed, uh, George Astakarian, uh, who was a very decorated World War II veteran, and so we want to uh, pay respects to him. He passed away peaceably uh, October 24th in Walnut Creek, and he was a longtime community benefactor and lifetime member of the Armenian Youth Federation. He joined the U.S. Navy and served for three years, received the Bronze Star, and so we want to send condolences to to uh, the Astakarian family uh, for sharing uh, their their family's uh, story about a, a decorated World War II veteran and send our love and peace to him. Um, we're gonna go to Edward Ambazar Zumayan. I'm sorry I did not do better on your name, Edward, um, who was a veteran of the second Artsakh War, uh, who's a current rank as Lieutenant. Uh, he's a deputy co company commander and during the war uh, suffered serious injury and uh, had to give up your, your duty at that time because of your, your injury. And so thank you for honoring us with your service and honoring us uh, here today. And as one of the younger veterans, uh, we've heard from some of the older veterans, uh, uh, please tell us a little bit about your shared experience and what you wanna say about, uh, about being a vet, serving your country you love and, and being with us here today. <coughs> Right. Thank you very much <clears throat> for having me. Well, um, um, I would like to first of all thank thank you for um, all the work that you do for us. Uh, I actually have zero info about you, but um, well, now I understand that Senator that you have uh, done and you are still doing very much for us, and I do appreciate that. Well, um, let me tell you a story. <clears throat> so. Um, in 2020, I finished the military university of Bosnian Sarkson in Yerevan. And after that, uh, I was deployed in Jibrail Ridge uh, in August. And you know that the war began in September and I was uh, serving approximately a month and a half. Well, the war began and um, uh, as you have mentioned before, um, I was a, a platoon commander and I was in charge of 17 men. And uh, during the war, uh, when um, our company commander died, um, I had to take the charge and become the company commander. And, you know, uh, every, uh, everyone knows that, that there was a big uh, difference in uh, military force uh, and uh, there were terrorists and special forces and our 18 year old uh, soldiers were fighting against them. And it was... Uh, you couldn't count on, on your uh, machine gun, on your pistol, or on your tank, because uh, once more, uh, the difference uh, between the military, the military force was immense. So, um, uh, 
I would like to tell you a story about one of my soldiers. His name is Tatu, and I'm. I will always tell this story, even even to my son and all, all the generations and all my friends, because he is the true true hero. All, all my soldiers, they I've lost eleven of my seventeen soldiers. They died uh, in an accident. Um, so Tatu came to me and told me that, you know, Ed, wherever you go, I'm with you and I'm ready to die for it. An hour later, the UAV uh, launched a missile and uh, blew up my track, my uh, military track, and 11 of my men died there. I was standing in front of the car, in, in front of the truck, and I don't know how I survived that. Uh, not to forget the mention that my father, Armen, uh, he, is also a, the, he is also a veteran of the first war of Artsakh, came and <laughs> saved my life during this second war. He participated and helped me so much because he is a professional and he knows his job. Um, you know, we are, uh, every time we're speaking about uh, patriotism, about discipline, about uh, medals and different stuff, yeah, this is great, this is wonderful. But uh, I would like to mention that there is such thing uh, called global political chess. Nevertheless, what you do for your country, you are always going to be um, a little mechanism, a little particle of a mechanism. <clears throat> so um, during this 45 days, I understood more what is to what is and who is human. And I would like, I wish I, I didn't understand this much because I still have dreams. I still remember my friends. Uh, I wish I had them with me because I don't know. That's that's the most important thing for me because Senator, for example, um, uh, I can have a drink with you. <laughs> you can come and you know we can celebrate a lot of things, but I cannot trust you because of because of this war. Uh, uh, my uh, way of thinking has changed. My view has changed because uh, I don't trust people anymore because we can have a good time together. We can celebrate a lot of things, but I don't know whether we are going to die for me or not. So once again, um, being a veteran is not always a good thing, even though if you're a patriot of uh, I don't know. You do. You you are willing to do everything for your country and for your family. But um, I don't know. Maybe I should finish. Thank you very much. Oh, That's Ed, it. Edward, you, you you speak from the heart, and never never worry about speaking from the heart. I see Nora nodding her head. Nora, do you have any comments about uh, what Edward just shared with us? Nora is a a, a psychologist and a good friend. Uh, anything you want to share, Nora? Thank you for sharing all of that, Edward. I mean, like uh, Senator mentioned, it did come from your heart. And trust has been one of the biggest issues that all of us, even in the diaspora, we're still struggling with. And sometimes that trust is turning into anger in a lot of us. And as mental health professionals, we're trying to balance that, how to channel our anger into better ways. Um, but I appreciate Edward, you know, being able to share all, you know, all of your feelings. And again, we're grateful for Senator Portantino to be able to give us this platform uh, for people like you to be able to speak and to be heard. Thank you. Mira, do you have anything you wanna say at this point? Well, um, thank you for inviting me for this um, meeting. Um, just after what Edward uh, has said, um, actually my participation as a president of Armenian Association of Social Workers is the only one like from this side, from, from the corner of helping professionals. What is done, what can be done better for veterans? What is not exactly what you are expecting from helping professionals? And as Nora mentioned, actually we are facing this, not only trust issue with trust, a loss of trust, but also other issues that became really big issue here, especially here in Armenia. Very different when soldiers came 
um, like Edward was mentioned after four uh, first uh, uh, war, it was it was less support, but more proud and more you know internal energy to to live and be part of society. Now we have opposite opposite situation, and I wanted to hear uh, from the veterans. Uh, not only from our own, but also uh, intercontinental other experiences, like what is the expectation from helping professionals? How we can do our job better to dedicate, to, to make your life better and be just professional, uh, professionally supported in order to make sure that you are supported in a professional way. Thank you. That was wonderful. From and thank you. And obviously, uh, We'll make sure that everyone has everyone's email from CalVet and from the different organizations and Nora and Mira will make sure we connect with you, uh, each other as well. We're going to go to Ara Madamian, uh, who's a veteran of the Second Artsakh War, again, uh, a young person who's with us. Um, he's a bionic software student at uh, AUA, uh, and he was on the front line, has two artillery badges, one as a third class artillerist and the other as an artillery specialist. And uh, here's an excerpt on, a, on an article he wrote. I believe there is nothing in life that would be more stressful and difficult than being in the front line. Every challenge or obstacle will be a matter of time to overcome. And we enter service as teenagers and leave as adults. So Aram, you shared that uh, observation and please share a little bit more about your common experience and what you'd like to tell us today. And thank, yeah, you so thank you. Thank you, first of all, everyone. Uh, invited me and organized this meeting. Um, yes, I was an um, uh, artillery sergeant when the war started, and I had a crew uh, I was responsible to. Uh, and also uh, my brother, uh, who was uh, 18 years old back then, was also serving in the front line during the war, and we were totally different places and uh, each one of us were do doing its duty in the front line. Uh, yeah, we had many difficult times. Uh, we lost many commanders. Uh, we lost many people that we looked onto them. So we became the commanders and we became the men uh, who needed uh, to, keep, uh, to, to keep the energy going, to, uh, to move uh, the other uh, friends and uh, our uh, other members of the team uh, to not lose hope and continue. Um, I think uh, it changed a lot uh, to everyone. Uh, as I mentioned in my article, we came as teenagers and we left as adults. Uh, but the most important thing uh, is that um, we need to do something that uh, the next generations and uh, the future generations will not see what we have seen and uh, we need to start uh, using our knowledge we need to develop our um, education so that uh, the war will not become a solution but the brain will so um, for that after the war um, uh, as everyone uh, i had um, many stresses and I uh, applied uh, to many uh, psychologists and thank to them. I am uh, now okay and everything is fine. And uh, I think this is a common value that every veteran shares because uh, the traumas that has experienced in, uh, during the war uh, can be long-term and everyone must share uh, with uh, psychologists and become um, more uh, relieved from that. And also I think, uh, the act of war, uh, the act of patriotism uh, participating in the war is just a start uh, of uh, serving a country and you need to continue the serving of the country. Uh, and as I'm doing, I'm, uh, I joined the uh, arms bionic uh, team uh, in Armenia, which uh, makes a bionic uh, uh, um, arms and legs uh, for the injured people in the war and uh, in my way I am using my knowledge to help those people so that they can achieve uh, their um, what they wanted in their life. Thank you. 
No, thank you. And that is such a great observation about the continued service. You know, after the war, your service and your duty doesn't stop. And you certainly are, are continuing that. So thank you very much uh, um, for doing what you did and doing what you're doing. Uh, appreciate it. Um, we're going to go to Balabek Barsamian, who was a veteran of the first Artsakh War. Um, and from 1992 to 1994 was at the front line. And he served as deputy commander of a regiment for communication with uh, the personnel from 94 to 97 and was a senior officer under the supervisor of Minister of Defense for the Republic of Armenia from 97 to 98. Um, Balabek, thank you for being with us today uh, to comment on the shared experience uh, that you had uh, during the first Artsakh war. And I think uh, uh, if we have some translation issues, Nora will, will help us. Thank you. Um, greeting everyone. This is a very important initiative for me. Yes, I am Azgu Champ. And this is my first time in the country. I am a veteran of the first time I'm Armenian by birth, and I uh, I have uh, citizenship in both countries, um, and my role is to protect my country. How many words is that? So, what are the ones I'm hunting? Hunting is just because I'm a Barsazan. I saw you have has not zero for this one. I have two challenges that I would like to express today. In order to stop, uh, in order to stop the war, there was a uh, arrangement to uh, to stop the war between Azerbaijan, Russia, and Armenia. Minsky Yev Franciain. Vorong as ins balance a room in Tarata Shajanum, Kayanuchuna, Yev Kawuchuna. Generic Arachin inch ascetic Miskin Araj. Amazai Hayastana, Rusastana, Yev Adrabejana, Idens Amazanagi de Kankesin, Yev Durs Mavetsin, Durs Tovetsin. Minsky, Yergu, Amanahaga, Yergarnerin, Miazel Nangnerin, Yev Franchain. So Minsk was left out. They were rejected uh, because Minsk was the peacekeeper. Uh, so those two countries were left out. I Yergu Yergarnera Mesamar, Balansa Rumain, Tarada Shajanum, Kaizuna, Yev Kawuchuna. And those two countries were balancing our peace. Um, so we no longer had that when they were rejected. Regional peace and stability, yeah. Uh, ask him if he, I was going to say, ask him if he wants to share about his experience in, in the first war as well. Senator Uzuma Boriete said, Arachi Baderaznit said, Portsarutian Masin Nikich Hosek. Ansnagam Portsarutian Masin, Arachi Baderaznit. Uzbam Gal, Uzbam for it, Petka Arachin Herting. You're going to get there, I'm sure. Arachin That's what he said, Mr. Portantino. Chu Paterasmus Sweds, in Chu Paterasmus Sweds. He wants to get there as to why the war started. Okay. In Chu Tanyan Kam Kerkanvets as Paterasma. And why it was repeated a couple of times. For it, the Tushadusun and Darsun Tasnut Tarakanis Micho Hitsun Avedi Tarikov. Uh, so there were people uh, basically serving between the ages of 18 to over 50, and he wants to address those two issues that why the war started. But if you would like for me to, you know, share my experience, I'll I'll move to that. 
No, uh, I'm, I'm obviously, obviously the, the, the geopolitics are important, um, but uh, also the, his personal story. So if he wants to tie them together, if he could tie them together, but uh, he, he's a, he's a hero and we want to hear about him. Uh, and that's, you know, sometimes I tell him I deeply respect his story and want to hear his story. So Shad Harkuma said, but Muchuna, you have yet to use a gabek here, Gusamiasin, Shad Love Galini. Martha, we don't think it's in a husk, or would Naharbuma. What is it to my patriotism? In a soon year put a gun in, yes, that's not your Tarigani. So he was 17 in 92, and people's rights were uh, not respected. Yer Pavel Pokre, yes, Hajahume in Messor. Gerezmanin, Vori Anun Azgamun, a Balabek Barsamian, yes, Karuma. So he used to visit his grandfather's grave, uh, whose name was also Balabek Barsamian. Vora Tarvaz, a Patmakan Gartmanum, Vora I saw, uh, I think an inner in a sun in a sun hinktari araj, Tovetakan Michan, uh, Schnorhiv, uh, Patmakan Hydenic, Tavas in Adrabejan. So he, the grave was in historic uh, Armenia 95 years ago. He was uh, basically buried there. And when he was 17, he still couldn't visit his uh, grandfather's graveyard. Borovetev, hence Adrebejani, aggressive Kalakan Chanshno River, Enja Managder, Azgain, Hadragan Suna in the Nom, I think, and Iprev, Hai, Iprev Christonia, Mir Continer and Unasel, Hantir Hassan Michev, and Tuk Paterazmi. And that was because of Azerbaijan's aggressive political role. Uh, there, there's always been conflict, so that's why he couldn't uh, go and visit. Is in Tamina Manomer Manal was Ait Oredin, Naev Sovetagan Mishuner Kluzwell, Yev Hayastani and Kahuchan, Uraman Kantirne, the Lara Chekil, Mesen Tamina Manomer Bolor Mertarega Kitsner, Yev Avenim Ezer, Kazma Kirpel, Yev Pashpanel, Ein Manazas, Hydenikimi Poker Massa, Vorovos, Tsavok, I saw him, Mimasa, Noritz Genaz, Noin Zaragrov. So back then it was the uh, Republic of Armenia because of the Soviet Union collapsing. And it was for people like him to protect uh, his country for whatever it was left. So that's how his military work started because his goal was to reach to his land to see his great grandfather's graveyard and to be able to place flowers. Yes, Savok, Chor Stari Patriaz Mitseto, I'd best Karoasa Hastanim, Tsanovaneri, Tsanandavairin, Warung for Patmagan, Hayastanesh, Gartmani, Gavar. And even after four years, he was not able to reach to that land that was in Gartman area. Yev Gartman area, Aveli Gugerov, Yev Kak, Nero, Aveli message, Kans, I saw Arsaka, where he must in Hosumank. I think can make Unesenek, Nuin Hantida, Nuin Seraspanutuna, by its Ashking Pagil, Ambosh Ashkarne Ash Pagil, Nishpes Ash Pagas Tasnik to Laganin. Drama, I saw Arsaki Hantida Rachika. So, so it was Gartman area was bigger than Artsakh, bigger than current Artsakh. And um, the, the whole world closed their eyes. And that's exactly why things continued now. And, you know, this is part of the history uh, from what it was before he's sharing. Ask him. Ask him if he. Ask him if he's had an opportunity to talk to some of the veterans of the the recent war. Ari tu netzelek nerga nor veteran neriet hosak. Ayuvi harke. Ayuvi harke. Yes, of course. 
nu în cantinere în jurul ierele în araci, nu în probleme în jurul meselen, iar sunt are araci, e încă sidenț pochebanoren, naiv, în ciuce, padrastul în Gorghidec, apagaium espes caloge linel zeset, apagaium petuciune espes caloge vera berbit zeset, apagaium în ciuce, ahticnere, espes caloge vera berbit zeset. Uh, so he's always in touch with them, even he's there for emotional support and uh, also supporting them in uh, scenarios as to what could happen in the future and giving them that kind of guidance. I see, I see, Adam, I see Adam has sent a positive message in the chat. Adam, do you have any questions you want to ask Balabek or say comment? Um, I... I didn't send anything, but oh, I saw somebody. It's Arman, it's Arman. Uh, Arman, maybe. Arman, I'm sorry. I misread the chat. Did we lose Arman? All right. Uh, so Balabek, uh, I, I hope I say this right. Harkant Nares, you have my respect as well. Um, one last thought about uh, the situation, a comment, please share. Verci chosk, na harkuma tez inch pes for has kat saget hayreno, but verci chosk inch unek aselik. Rashkin chosk es petka khantrem mercedator nariz, hat ka pes barsta stichan marmin nariz, vos mez boloris mijamoto cham pia vokmu cham panarovchum stechceng. Mej veteranerin, ai de rida sartnele în urmă cu la prume în Hayastanum, vor pisi așcatank unenan, dar bez așorba tehnologia can uraman în alorul și unerit octavelu, e ca între vor pisi miațial nagneri, barsaguin, uraman ambion nerit, sunt șetsnen, martui la un cnelic a revoluțiune, martui la un cnelic, martui arjek a venit ca revoluție, ca în stetan, ca să cam bolor, ca să chia arjekner. E bolor, smia sim pai care în vor pisi. Voci mi tasna ut tare ca ne-i rita sart, ci cor să ne văd că te vă e ambușii și pata necuțiună, e rita sartiună. E de pe Hauțian, Hauțian ce anapară vor ne-a chemat Carozen, vă vor să-mi asim. He's requesting from all the senators to be able to help our veterans, whether it's through jobs or workforce, and also to be able to help the United States to support us. And to make sure no 18-year-old has to lose legs and arms and be in a situation that they've been. I, I concur. Uh, God bless everyone who serves. And I, I wish there was a time in all, all of our worlds where we didn't have to see wounded veterans. Nothing, nothing breaks all of our hearts. And I think of, as some of the older veterans have talked about the parental aspect, you know, these are our children who go off to war to fight for our freedoms. And uh, many of them don't come home and many of them come home uh, broken and hurt and wounded. And uh, thank you, Balabek, for sharing your, your experience and your, your views. Thank you, Mr. Senator. Uh... Thank you. Nora, do you want to comment on some of the some of the after effects? And again, uh, a, a licensed uh, therapist in California and trains other therapists to help with the aftermath of war. Do you have any observations you want to share? Uh, so starting September 27th of last year, um, it's been very difficult for the mental health uh, specialists, especially here locally because we had a lot of uh, demonstrations happening, donation drives, this and that. And we noticed that everyone was going through a lot of emotional different feelings. And this was existential crisis. And uh, we started a group of us to do psychological first aid trainings for the mental health specialists in Armenia. And um, we did that. We had about 200 therapists, psychologists join our Zoom sessions on a regular basis, sometimes twice a week. And um, 
I was involved with those trainings uh, in addition to doing uh, presentations for our diaspora Armenians because being far, we were not understanding what was going on. Um, and in the beginning, we still had trust. Uh, like Edward mentioned, the trust is broken. We still had trust. We had hopes. And we noticed um, the loss and grief aspect, the re-triggering of the trauma, the transgenerational trauma coming back from 1915. So we gathered our um, forces uh, just to see how we can help. So different um, platforms were initi initiated to provide therapy or support system for the soldiers who were uh, already ending up in hospitals, injured, et cetera. Uh, and right after the war, uh, again, through AUA and other psychological organizations, we started a mental health hotline. And uh, I was... Uh, one of the lead therapists with two other therapists, one from England, one from San Francisco, uh, to do the trainings and the supervision for the Armenia team to start the mental health hotline called Hoke Panagantej Kids. That's 24 hours. Um, and, you know, we, we knew that that was a need and a lot of people were not able to travel because of COVID. Um, however, briefly, like I mentioned, um, when we go through trauma, PTSD, there are so many stages we go through. And one of them is denial, anger, bargaining, uh, depression, and then acceptance, right? So in the mental health field, we felt like we had to educate the diaspora. And as a therapist, uh, being in the field for over 20 years, this was the first time for me going through the same thing that my clients were going through. So it's been challenging. Like I remember crying in between sessions because clients will talk about their cousin, young cousin being in the front lines, not, you know, being able to hear from them, but we had to, you know, make sure we're providing support. And um, I'm, I'm very proud of, you know, my people, how resilient they are how resilient we are. And I'm proud that I was able to take part in training a lot of psychologists and therapists. And all my respect to everyone who were on the front lines, who took part, the veterans, we couldn't have done this without you. And one thing that came out of this is uh, the unity, of course, we can never forget our unity. And now the damage control is, like I said earlier, how to channel all of that anger, trust, frustration into more productivity, into more purpose and more power. And as a therapist, that's been my goal in the last uh, several months to be able to help my people uh, to find that uh, avenue to help while we're still healing. Um, so again, all my respect, I think all the community members, whoever could afford money, they donated, whoever could raise their voices, they raised their voices and everyone channeled their feelings in different avenues. So again, thank you, Mr. Portantino for always being there for us. Uh, you are a hero as well, thank you. And all my respect to our veterans, uh, especially in this room right now. Thank you for all you've done. And, and Nora, obviously you're in the diaspora and doing this from, as a diasporan, uh, you know, there is a role for the diaspora. I know Artak Balak Bagarian was just in Glendale and spoke to a crowd of folks to, to be involved, to be, to be helpful. Uh, and certainly thank you for your efforts, what you're doing. Uh, any other, you know, speak to the diaspora for a moment, any other message? That you want to give to the diaspora? I know some of the folks in the chat uh, have that question. Um, I think a lot of us lost hope and I would like for us to regain hope uh, because even um, Balabek mentioned in our history, we've been through this so many times and we are resilient people. So we need to gather our hope. And like I said, this was existential crisis. 
And I've been a war baby myself in Beirut, Lebanon. So I know how war was and I've lived, you know, when bomb bombs were happening, but we never felt like we were losing our land. So this was very, very different. I've heard stories from my grandparents from the genocide. And now I feel like we lived it secondhand and it's very traumatic. So let's not lose hope, unity, let's all unite. And let's, you know, move forward with more, like I said, purpose and more power. Thank you, Nora. Uh, George, we're gonna come to you next. Uh, George Dixon is from the LA County Office of Military and Veterans Affairs, um, and you're the senior representative. Uh, tell us a little bit about what LA County does. And I know some of the folks from, from Artsakh and Armenia uh, want to talk after this conversation. I mean, this is the beginning of a conversation. And so if you could share what LA County does, and again, put your email in the chat so we can follow up and those folks can follow up with you. Uh, thank you, Senator, for inviting me. I'm, I'm George Dixon. I'm the Supervisor of Veteran Services for Los Angeles County. And as everybody knows, LA County is very large. We have ocean, mountain, desert, and city. Similar to some of the areas of, uh, across the nation, but all in one County. Um, LA County, in partnership with CalVet, the Department of Veterans Affairs, um, VPAN now, um, and other organizations, um, keep in mind that we can't do what we do without being a part of the team. And everybody here who served in the armed forces knows what it takes to be a team player. And we know there's no I in team. So um, non-commissioned officers or sergeants, can you raise your hands again? So keep in mind, I was a senior non-commissioned officer. I retired out of the armed forces um, in 2014. Um, I got to see people go to war, come back from war, and I lost two people in war. So I understand where you're coming from and, and, and accepting the loss of an individual uh, that I trained thinking, was it me that caused that? Um, and how to cope with that, like Doc says there, Norma, and understanding my wife still calls me a workaholic because I bottle myself up in work and then I'm, I'm very restrictive on who I who I pair up with or who's my battle buddy who I think that's um, like the one sergeant said who I'm who I think is going to take care of me so LA County and Veteran Services Division we help you secure VA benefits across the county of Los Angeles with 22 field locations such as Anthony said we work with compensation pension education training rehabilitation medical, and a wide variety of benefits that our vet reps help um, veterans navigate in partnership with CalVet and other organizations. But for myself, um, um, transitioning and listening to everybody talk um, on the line here about war, I went in in 1979 uh, in the Army peacetime, trained at uh, Fort Ord, California after I left Fort Benning, the school for men, um, back in the day. And I was at Fort Ord, California for some time. Um, held positions as a squad leader, team leader, platoon sergeant. I was a drill sergeant, so I got to train people and got to see them. Um, when I hear the term knucklehead, we don't use that no more here. We'll get in trouble for saying that, but um, but um, um, having observed people, and I, I, I can feel everybody here when you lose somebody or you've been in combat or you've been in battle and then coming back and trying to transition and cope with what's going on um, and trying to readjust. So it is very hard. And County Veteran Services in partnership with VA, CalVet, and other organizations such as the JVS and the Peer Access Network help you navigate those obstacles. In our office here, our, our main office is at um, Patriotic Hall downtown Los Angeles, um, are, are here to help uh, to provide referrals and assistance if needed. So um, just keep in mind, you know, I always believe when I was an active duty soldier, my mission, my soldiers, my family, and myself, or actually now it's my mission, my family, my soldiers, and myself. But when I transitioned out, it became my mission, my veterans, my family, and myself. And I can interrupt those because my wife will get mad if I work a lot of weekends. So you better take care of your family. Um, ultimately, you got to take care of yourself, everybody, because like um, Edward said, you know, if I, a distrust with people trying to adjust. I don't, I can drink a beer with you, but I'm very, um, um, Anthony can tell you, I, him and I share a cubicle. I talk to him, but I'm, I strictly stick to my cubicle. I don't really socialize a lot. I'm, I'm always on a mission. So um, what do we call that doc? Where we're continuing 
operations. We're continuously operating, 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 and, and we don't stop. But, you know, I, I thank all of you for serving. We're here to help you. Um, I'll put my email in, in the chat and, um, you know, looking forward to talking to everybody. Thank you, George, for being here. And thank you for all the county services that you provide. I know a number of folks have talked about the returning veterans. You know, it's one thing to be there. It's another thing to come back and be a appreciated and then have an opportunity to, to work and thrive. And, you know, the military training is, is, you know, second to none. And I know that's something we always wrestle with from a policy perspective is how much uh, deference to give that military training and so it's important. So thank you for helping to 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 help our soldiers uh, heal when they come home. I'm going to go to uh, Zephyr Chirassian uh, next, and uh, she is the EGORT's expert and advisor on the Armenian Association of Social Workers. Uh, recently repa repatriated to Armenia from Australia, and worked with families affected by the Second War. War, um, and again, you know how. How can we all cooperate, uh, Zephyr, and what comments do you want to share with us today? Thank you, Senator Portantino. Um, uh, I'm uh, just a little correction. I'm an uh, the EGORTS fellow um, to the Ministry of um, Labor and Social Affairs. Um, wow. I'm only a member of the Association of Social Workers, um, and I work for Fund for Armenia Relief as well. Um, in regards to um, my perspective, I think uh, as a diasporian living in Armenia who had repatriated only a few months prior to the war, um, I had a very split uh, experience, uh, both as a professional social worker as a, uh, with a history of counselling, as well as a partic being a participant and a child that was raised also in war from Iran to Syria to Lebanon and then um, uh, as a refugee in Austra uh, to Australia. And um, in moving forward um, from my experience that I had, um, and in sort of responding back to Nora as well, it would be a uh, the loss of hope and the message of unity, I think, would really be restored um, by a uh, either a a repatriation drive or a long-term volunteer drive to return back and experience and see what people in Artsakh and what people in Armenia are doing as a resilient group of people who are trying to move forward and to bring in their energy that is, although they are hurt and upset, but they've still been able to carry on their lives in their respective uh, countries in the diaspora. Whereas uh, the, uh, the Armenians in Armenia and in Artsakh are, are uh, almost on uh, autopilot, and but they need to uh, push themselves to just keep on working because there is no other alternative. Um, and I guess my my question to you um, was to say, of the programs that you've been um, uh, in in uh, communications with or initiating. Um, do you? How do you think we can uh, co uh, be cooperative and network to ensure better articulation and implementation and cooperation of the vision that you have in place? Well, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have this conversation today. Was you know we have this shared experience between American veterans and Artsakh veterans. We have many of the same uh, situations in the aftermath. Um, we can learn from each other which is one of the reasons why I wanted everybody to, to share their emails and contact information uh, because, you know, we're not going to cover everything in an hour and a half, but we can start that conversation. And I was deeply moved by uh, about an Artak speech last week in, in Glendale asking us to do more. And so that was one of the inspirations to, to putting this on. And so you're correct. We can do more. We have to do more and we have to share our experiences. And, you know, I didn't serve in the military, but I am part of the policymakers who help shepherd the, the, what we do. And that's why I wanted the veterans committee to be part of this as well. Um, and, and they were, so thank you for, for prodding me and prodding us. And uh, again, about an art talk for, for asking us all to do more. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go to um, Jimmy next, 
who's a MSW program manager of Veterans Peer Access Network. Jim, you've been patient, um, and I really appreciate uh, you being here. And if you want to maybe comment on Zephyr's comments about what we can do uh, across continents and, and what observations that what, what works, what doesn't work, and share a little bit about your experience um, as well. well. Thank you, Senator. So good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jimmy Guevara. I'm the program manager here for the Veteran Peer Access Network, which is uh, Supervisor District number five. So that covers a lot of portion of LA County, which is Antelope Valley, all the way to Glendale, Pasadena, uh, La Crescenta, La Cañada, and San Dimas. So, and I work very closely with George Dixon's team and himself, same with Anthony Rodriguez and Cal Vets as well. So kind of like just kind of just hearing the experience alone, let me just first put out there that, you know, uh, the Armenian community is very like very, very close to me and heart just because I grew up in, in Little Armenia. So I like, you know, a lot of my, a lot of my understanding of the Armenian community comes from me growing up there, you know, just in East Hollywood and you know, going to Lacan and going to, you know, Hollywood High and all of that. So it's great to, you know, to be able to give back in that sense, just kind of and myself, I joined the Marine Corps. I went to the Iraq War back in 2005. I went back to back um, deployment. So just hearing the understanding of what everyone's talking about here is just a great, like you know, it just kind of helped me reflect back on, on the experience that we that I had with my team out there as well. You know, um, coming back home, if you feel a little different, you're not, you know, you 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 come back with like who do you talk to when you're home, right? I think that's the biggest challenge that we have. And that's the reason why this uh, this program called Veteran, uh, the Veteran Peer Access Network became the they came came to fruition. The reason why because a lot of veterans were coming home, trying to understand why like who how to relate to society, how do we use the experience that we have to build ourselves back up and and use that strength and resilience. And, and one thing I definitely know about the Armenian community is they're extremely resilient when it comes to you know per, uh, pers uh, pursuing like you know just getting stronger and getting better big strong community that's definitely like you know i gotta get i gotta give a lot of like i gotta love to the armenian community and that's where i learned a lot from myself you know for even for my own personal experience uh the other thing that we provide at the vpan program is more like my whole staff is pretty much all veterans so they 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 we walk through the process of what it's like to get like you know how to gain benefits how to talk to somebody that understands our culture our language um, you know, just kind of being able to, and I think Edward hit it right on the nail. Who do you trust? Yeah, I could have a beer with you. I could probably like, but at the same time, it's not. It's kind of that feeling of like, you know, that when you when you have fellow warriors around you, you you feel that sense of like camaraderie, that trust. At the end of the day, it was never like I always talk about when we were out there. It was never about politics. It's about like more just taking care of each other as a family. And you know, losing losing a fellow brother or sister out there was always a, it was a, probably one of the most difficult things to be out there, right? And I can never say it's it gets easier, but you start living your life as you know, they're trying to live your best life for them, right? And because that's you know, you you came back home, you're like they earned that, they gave you the opportunity to live today, and that's kind of how I always try to teach a lot of my veterans, like, hey, I get it, it's good to live there. Don't live there. Visit, say hello to your brothers and sisters when we go do these, like when we go back in memory lane. But try to live for today because that's what they would want. You know, they would want you to live your best life of today, right? And that's the hardest thing. It's never gonna be an easy like you. I'll, I'll be. But what we do at our program, we connect a lot of our veterans with you know mental health, um, mental health specialists. We also work close with Department of Mental Health of LA County. Um, we work, we help veterans like if they're homeless, how to get them temporary housing or get them permanent housing. We connect them with workforce. We try to we provide them the access to like kind of a linkage service to be able to connect them to like, hey, if you've earned these benefits, let me show you how to get there. Um, instead of having you know just you know nothing against my civilian counterpart, I love all my civilian counterpart, and but something what it, what it's like when you when you have like you know, another veteran that's struggling, like having another veteran talk to, like another uh, brother and sister tell you like. I know what it's like to be there. I know what I know what it takes to get there. And even myself, I'm in the mental health specialist side now, as a as a social worker. So I'm kind of living on both edge, edges of the, of the spectrum. But you know, and that's one thing I talk about, right? And that's kind of what we do here with the VPAN program. We connect you. We 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 also help you. Like if if let's say we're one we're another access to what George Dixon team does, right? George Dixon team does all the benefits and everything. 
if they don't know that we're, if for some reason they just don't know where they're at, they could connect with us and we'll connect them directly that way as well, you know? So it's more like, it's another funnel that we could use and we partner, like I said, I think George Dixon hit it right now. We can't do our jobs without being without being a team. And that's something that I work, where we work very well. I myself, I was an NCO back in the Marine Corps. So I understand that concept of, I'd rather be on the, on the boots on the ground, but it's hard when they keep me in the office. Trust me, it's hard to keep me. Like, I don't like being in the office, but I, sometimes I have to. Like, that's one thing I'm still trying to process and work on. Um, so is there a difference between, between uh, uh, corporals and sergeants and, and lieutenants? Yes, so um, that was a, do that all, was a, we do all the work. That was a facetious. <laughs> that was a facetious question, but if you want to answer it, go ahead. No, it's a. I love. I love my officers. They were actually very. They were, they were good. Like they were a good guide on on you know like kind of what what the overlay 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 of the picture was, but to get that mission done, you still need the NCOs to push that mission forward. <laughs> so. Just remember, Senator. Just remember, Senator, we're the backbone of the Army and the Corps. We get everything done. <laughs> exactly. It's just like the Senate. My staff does all the work, but <laughs> I get to, I, but I get to be on screen. But somebody had to put this together. Um, uh, Jimmy and and Zephyr, I think you guys should talk after this communication because I think a lot of what Jimmy's doing is a lot of what you're you're wanting to do. And so when this is over, we're going to send a contact list for everybody because. As I said before, this is the first conversation. Uh, hopefully you'll all continue to talk to each other because what affects one of us affects all of us. Um, so Jimmy, thank you for doing what you're doing. I see that we've been joined by the high commissioner of the Aspirin Affairs, uh, Zadi Sananian is here. Um, Zadi, if you wanna share, thank you for, for your office, help facilitating uh, uh, the, the minister and other aspects of this program today. So thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you, Senator. And actually, I was with you the entire time. I just wasn't uh, linked into the uh, the Zoom, but I watched uh, the entirety of the um, this this meeting, this conference, and I heard uh, all the speakers, um, all of whom uh, were so thoughtful and and had so much to share. Uh, please, before I make my comments, I, I do want to thank you, Senator Portantino, for putting this very important. Um, meeting together, uh, common valor and, and shared experiences. Truly only men uh, and women of the armed forces who've participated in combat, who put their lives on the line um, in the name of uh, a value that is uh, higher than um, our personal lives, uh, is, is, the, is the type of thing that can bond um, these individuals together. I think anyone who hasn't served in the armed forces um, can't possibly come close to understanding the experiences that they've had. Uh, but nevertheless, um, it is incumbent upon us, uh, public servants in particular, but society in general, to um, stand by our veterans, uh, uh, stand by our uh, armed forces uh, at all times, but, but, but especially uh, stand by our veterans uh, who have already uh, gone through uh, this experience, combat experience or the experience of defending uh, the homeland and are bearing the uh, proverbial scars from that experience. Um, uh, indeed, as, as we heard from uh, many of the uh, speakers who spoke on social services issues and rehabilitation issues, uh, the veteran services in the United States are far more advanced than they are in Armenia, but as um, Eduard and Fiajan uh, mentioned, uh, certainly the situation in Armenia currently is much better uh, than it was after the first Artsakh war. Uh, the government is better equipped, better trained, um, and in a better place to actually deal with the issues of the veterans. And, and far from it being perfect, of course, but nevertheless, um, our, our veterans are getting a degree and a level of service that they didn't in the past. Um, uh, as I as I look back at, at my past experience uh, as a public official in Glendale, to this day at my office in Yerevan, uh, at the office of the High Commissioner, I have the shovel from the groundbreaking ceremony of the Veterans Village, which took place in Glendale in 2014, I believe. And uh, interestingly, 
Uh, everyone who walks into my office asks what that shovel represents and why it's hanging on my wall. Uh, but symbolically, that is the only groundbreaking um, paraphernalia that I've returned. Oh. You got muted, Zare. Zare, you got muted. Maybe we should text him. Yep, hold on. The lives that we do. Oh, there you go. We, we lost you for about 30 seconds. I'm sorry. Yeah, I keep getting phone calls, Senator. I apologize. Um, so uh, I want to thank also, I want to make sure that we remember the Senate Committee on Veteran Affairs for organizing um, this uh, video conference, as well as, of course, the Select Committee on California, Armenian Artsakh Mutual Trade. I just hope that, um, as, as we heard from the, the Armenian Minister for Social Services and Labor, Narek Mukarchan, uh, we would love to learn more from the Armenian U.S. and, and particularly California experience. Uh, and uh, yeah, your audio dropped again. Audio dropped. Get closer again. to the microphone. Okay. Can you hear me now? It's a little it dropped a little bit. You know what? Maybe it's my earpieces. So, um, Zoom has its Zoom is allowing us to go cross continent, but it has its limitations. It does. It sure does. So, this is it. there you go. Now you're it back. Is. There okay. you go. Um, so again, I wanted to to thank the org the organizers, uh, you uh, personally, Senator Portantino for giving this opportunity to, our, to the uh, veterans, both in Armenia and in the United States to exchange experiences, exchange their um, common valor. Um, and uh, hopefully this will be an ongoing relationship which will lead to um, better understanding of all the difficulties that our veterans face and, and truly share no matter where it is that they experience combat. Thank you. Thank you, High Commissioner. And as I said, uh, this is, this, th there is a shared experience, um, regardless of what continent you fight on, regardless of where you were born. And obviously having uh, CalVet, the county uh, nonprofits services, uh, and, and your office and, and the folks in Armenia all communicate. It, it's, it's a start. Mira, you're going to have the honor of being our, our final word, and then I'll say a wrap up. But uh, let me tell folks a little bit about uh, Mira Antonian, uh, Associate Professor of Yerevan State University, Faculty of Sociology, Chair of Social Work and Social uh, Technologies. Uh, you work with families affected by war. Um, you've heard some of the stories today, um, deeply emotional. You know, what do you want to share with us? From what you're doing, what we can do better, and what you want to say to the to the men and women who serve uh, both of our countries. Well, again, thank you for this uh, such a nice opportunity to, to listen to people who've been, <coughs> excuse me, to been uh, feeling all the challenges that were actually brought to everybody's home, to everybody's family. Recently with Zepur and with um, 70 other colleagues, we had conference here in Armenia and we invited all helping professionals who are working with veterans, who are working with families who have lost family member or with <coughs> wives and children. So helping professionals, psychologists, psychiatrists, social workers and researchers, um, after war, as an association, we actually undertook a huge mission uh, going to each replaced family, from family to family, and we had we implemented kind of need assessment for each family who were, um, we had to move to Armenia in order to save lives during war. And then, as you may know, um, 
quite a big number of families still cannot return back home because there is no housing situation, there is no chances to return. So we came together. Um, there was lots of uh, thoughts, you know, um, looking like back, what, why did it happen, where the mistakes were, how we can do things in a better way, how we can like uh, bring together all our forces, as Nora mentioned, to be more constructive, to look forward, to, to give hope to others and uh, take energy from each other and then give this hope to everybody who is still healing because of what, what happened. One of lessons that we learned and I wanted to share with you that we heard during this conference was that during first, I, I, I'm, I'm more than agree with Balabek saying about so frustration after first war, uh, not uh, having constructive help to, or to veterans and to families who had um, lost family member. This time, I fully agree with uh, Mr. Zares Nanyan that now we have much more organized way helping people who are suffering because of war. But uh, at the same time, uh, I was very young, uh, quite young in first war. And I remember veterans, one of veterans saying this phrase during my conversation with them, that I wish I died during the war because uh, all diaspora support and all government support is going actually to those families who lost someone. So we all come with attention, with support, with emotional support to the families who are actually have uh, victims because of war. But we forget about veterans. So I cannot find job. I cannot find uh, you know any means to live. So this means that uh, it it it. It would be better if I, I was with them, gone because of war, but not uh, being alive. Uh, one of my lessons learned, and, and I pass this to conference uh, members, that we need to be very careful to not create such a unbalanced support to people who are suffering actually almost in the same way, with different emotions, but in the same way. They, this is like kind of common, common feeling. Another lessons learned that we uh, had during the conference was that, okay, each time when you have such a big stress, such a, uh, uh, how to say, widely national uh, stress you, you pass with, um, we need again to come together to find the like last energy to bring together and have this more synergy effect to help each other, to be with each other, and helping professional, as we learned from, from the uh, conference, actually they are feeling, as Nora said, they are passing the same way that they are clients. And this is very specific situation, really very specific. I'm visiting Artsakh each month for three days minimum or for one week with my whole team. And we are going to create their social workers because Artsakh never had social workers to help people. So in this process, we lessons that we learned from first war and lessons that we learned working with the replaced displaced people here is actually a big lesson how we have to start in Artsakh with such a small place already with such a big problems where to start with how to to make things move from the point where we are so just my wish uh, in the last kind of um, sentence is that I'm very much appreciated that I'm here and I heard experiences cross-continental, as you mentioned. But I can understand each one and every everyone here in this room in, and the future work, like in networking and learning from each other, um, ex exchanging experience, etc., will be, I think, a, a good energy to take from this meeting and take with us for other meetings and with uh, to our everyday work um, to learn more how to do things in better way. So I think the best. Uh, I am very much thankful to you, um, Senator being always with Armenia, being always with Artsakh people. 
And yes, we need to find uh, light for hope and light for hope being uh, hopeful that rights of people living in Artsakh will be respected. And it, this will be like one of uh, major uh, um, topic that we can put our hands saying, yes, we can continue to live because this is already recognized and uh, appreciated as, as right of people. Thank you very much for this uh, and, and apologize for my English. I'm a little bit emotional, but uh, yeah, thank you very much. It's okay. It's, it's okay. I'm emotional. You're, you're making me emotional. And, and obviously, you know, we're meeting tomorrow to talk about what we can do from a social work uh, support system. And, and again, that's the beauty of, of this new electronic age. We can communicate. Uh, Anthony, uh, we talked globally from an Armenian perspective. Any last words you want to give from a from a Calvet? And I know you're available to meet with the, the folks from Armenia as well. If the if the minister wants to follow up, you're you're available. And so any last California statewide message you want to give? Well, I just want to say that uh, we're very uh, pleased and fortunate to be in California where the veteran benefits are among the best, if not the best in the entire nation. And I just want to encourage everyone to take advantage of what we do have here. Um, and um, I'm available to speak to uh, individuals on how to do it. And as was mentioned by both Jimmy and George to make referrals, um, nobody does everything well in, er in every area of the veteran arena. And fortunately, we know a lot of people where we would make recommendations to assist in any way possible. Thank you, uh, Anthony, and thank you all for being here. Uh, you know, as as High Commissioner Sinani had said, you know, we those of us who didn't serve, you know, we we don't have the same the the honor of of doing what you've done. We don't have those experiences. We have the appreciation of it, but it was important to hear from you directly. It was important for for others to to hear and share that that common valor, that common experience, um, whether it's the first Artsakh War, the second Artsakh War, Vietnam, Afghanistan, World War II, you know what you do for your countries, for our countries, um, is commendable and and beyond belief. And the, you know we lose too many soldiers. No one asks to go to war. I don't think anybody wakes up in the morning and says, you know, I want to go to war today but you're all thrust in that situation and you do it so honorably. So thank you for your service and thank you for giving back to the community in the aftermath, for not just coming home and, and saying, you know, I, I'm done with this. Um, and Edward, you know, I'm gonna try to earn that trust factor when we have that beer together. Um, and those were very poignant comments that you made. Um, so thank you all for being here with us. Um, uh, I just deeply appreciate you you taking the time to share your story. God bless all of you, and uh, thank you for your service. Thank you, Thunder. Uh, and again, I want to give a big shout out to the to the committee staff, uh, the Veterans Committee, my staff, um, the the Senate Caucus, all for putting this together. Thank you again. Behind all of us, we're hardworking, dedicated public servants. So, thank you to the staff and uh, the High Commissioner's Office, and God bless everybody. Thank you, Senator.